Hello everyone. Welcome to my first entry of uh, my series of blogs. And hopefully this one will be much more helpful to those people who are into uh, sports and recreation, emergency response, and all those people who are using this the stuff that you see in front. So uh, tonight I'll be talking about carabiner parts and markings. So this is one common thing that uh, each educator really needs to uh, explore as they go along with their trainings and as they go along with their work. To start with, I've got three carabiners in front of me. Some people call it snap hook, some, some people call it connectors, and so all sorts, different countries, different regions, they have different uh, terminologies. But uh, here in the Philippines, we call them carabiners or carabiners. So to start with, I'll be talking about the parts. Uh, we've got one aluminum carabiner in here. I got two carabiners in here, which are metal carabiners. Um, later on, we'll be talking about the difference between aluminum and uh, metal, no? and, 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 and maybe in my future videos. But for now, we'll focus on the parts and the markings because it's commonly misinterpreted and commonly unnoticed. So let me start with the, the spine. So first part of the carabiner is what we call spine. So basically, this is what we call spine. This is where your load is being held upon. Whatever load you put on, this is the strongest part of your carabiner. So we call them spine. Right? And then next, we've got the gate. Right, gate is this one. Basically, it's the gate. It closes and opens. Right. Next, we got the nose. Basically, this is the nose right here. Some people have different terminologies too. They call, they call this notch. Uh, I call it nose. Some people also call this part the... Uh, as you can see in here, this is the nose latch. If you use the nose right here, you get the nose latch on the other side, this part. So the nose gets inside the nose latch. Some people call this notch. Alright, next part, we'll talk about the lock sleeve. Okay. Lock sleeve, on the other hand, is this one. Although there are a lot of types of carabiners with different types of locking system. Um, I come from the emergency response community, so we are pretty much uh, given the recommendation to use screw locks for us to, to do the double checking every now and then. So we, we preferably use um, screw locks right now, but some people also use slip locks nowadays to eliminate the dangers of vibrations, especially in long runs. So, Right here, I've got a lock sleeve. Okay, this is the lock sleeve right here. And basically, it's a screw gate carabiner. So you screw it in, lock it up. On the other hand, this one is also a screw gate, but this one has got different uh, lock sleeve. It's got slip lock. So one, you slip it out and then open. When you release your grip on your right hand, it automatically locks. Right there. Okay. Right, next will be the hinge. All carabiners has got their hinge right here. It's the hinge. In Bisaya, we call this bisagra. So it's the hinge right here. Hinge of a door. It's the same. The hinge right here. Oftentimes, this is the part that gets really uh, dusty and you need to clean it up. Right? And then some people also call this part right here, this part right here, I mean this part and this part, you call it elbows. But uh, yeah, stick to what I, what I mentioned a while ago, pretty common. We got spine, gate, nose, nose latch, lock sleeve, and hinge. Next is the markings. As much as possible, I want to make it short. 
most markings are are labeled with the with three letters which comes with letter M, B and S which which means minimum breaking strength. A lot of people are are also confused on the meaning of MBS, but there are a lot of a lot of articles also in the internet where you can find solutions on what you really want to know. But on my side MBS is always a good point of knowing. All crabiners have got their MBS in them. So for example on this big one, metal crabiners is 40 kilonewton MBS rated. This one, on the other hand, smaller one, it's, it's, it's an industrial carabiner. So it's just around 22 to 25 kilonewtons. On this side is very used recreational. So you've got maximum strength embedded in the markings right here, which is right, 20, 27 kn. So it's far more stronger than this one. Although this is an aluminum and this is these are metals right here. Um, getting the MBS it will also give you an idea on how would you get into the safe working load or the, the weight of the load where you can safely apply on each carabiner. Uh, with the markings, I'll proceed with the markings. Markings has different manufacturers have got their different markings on them, but the most common markings that we'll see in carabiners are this tree. Okay, can uh, let you see it a bit. Let the camera camera focus right there. Right, mark marking first CE zero one two zero. CE means European conformity. So most carabiners you will see these figures right here, IO, which is basically talking about the, the load that is applied from this point to this point of the carabiner. Okay, it's loaded this way. So carabiner is rated 27 kilonewtons. Right? Now, if the carabiners are closed like that, and it's being loaded this way, that gives you an 8 kilonewtons maximum minimum breaking strength. When the gates are open like this, the carabiner is being tested and pulled this way with a maximum minimum breaking strength of 7 kilonewton. Right? So each, each carabiner has got their own different figures when you talk about their MBS. On the other hand, you'll see, there you go, MBS. Pulled this way using the, the major axis. This is basically the major axis right here. So when it's loaded in the major axis, you'll be ha you the carabiner is rated to withstand 40 kilonewton. If carabiner is closed right there and it's loaded this way, it's gonna give you a 16 kilonewton and then when the gates are opened and loaded in the major axis like this so its rated strength is 11 kilonewtons right a couple of markings that you'll see on some industrial carabiners are this one you got the US you got CE steel here in the manufacturer right here. You got EN, which also specifies the conformity in the Euro European standards. 362, uh, 2004B. So you can search it up if you want to really dig in deeper what are the provisions on EN on that number. And then, uh, what else? Some carabiners. Uh, which are manufactured earlier or earlier 2015 up has has features in them that enables each owner to to do um, tracing so they, they specifically embedded a, an electronically etched markings some for, I know for a fact that there's a manufacturer in, in Europe that's that 
that uses um, a distinct QR codes on each product that they have. So this is a very uh, informative way of uh, uh, understanding how your hardware's or your carabiners work and how it's being marked. Uh, some carabiners are also, or some brands are also conforming with other countries, especially in Asia. That's why nowadays when you switch to buy newer uh, brands or newer models, you will see markings with EEC, EAC, which stands for Euro Asian uh, norms or Euro, Euro Asian um, conformity. You also, you common markings also that you'll see, you, you would see CE and EN, which is the European version that has been going long time ago. You also have ANSI, you have ANSI, which is American National Standards Institute. Sometimes you get to have a carabiner which is rated also with AS, Alpha Shara, and NZS, which means New Zealand and Australian standards. So for the kilonewtons and how it's measured, probably I'm going to talk about that in my future blogs. I hope you guys, you, you find this presentation um, pretty useful for your day-to-day -day lives. And please don't forget to like and subscribe my videos more to come and please don't be don't be hesitant to put in your inputs in the comment box section uh, let us know what you want to talk about or probably we can share about until then see you around bye